Welcome to yet another episode of Bobo's Void. Uh, my name is Bobo and I'm your host. I'm with the beautiful... Thank you. Donovan. Thank you. Do you think that love and money can coexist? I think that money, because it is a binary, yeah. n- numbers and basing anything around numbers always leads to a binary black and white. Money is a Wait, black and white thing. what do you mean thing. by it's a binary? You either have money or you don't. And money begets money, and poverty begets poverty, right? Mm. Something we talk about a lot is, like, uh, the white people that we grew up thinking that we were, like, in the same socioeconomic (laughs) class with. When their parents die, they all get $3 million. Yeah. Really, black people, this is something that, like, white people never tell you about. Like, you'll (laughs) think that you're in the same socio... Every time someone's white parent dies, they just get $3 million. No, truly. Because white people, like, they have life insurance, they have assets, they have homes, they have... Black people in America, I don't, it's probably worse here. They have 90% less family wealth than white people. Yeah. So capital just begets capital, right? Mm. You put a million dollars in the S&P 500, it goes up 18% a year. Now you've just made an extra $100,000. It's it's really easy when you have money to beget. And then poverty, right? Begets poverty. Because it's so expensive to be poor. Right. When you miss one credit card payment, your credit score goes down, and then your bank takes away the money that you have access to, and then now you don't have money to meet the next payment, and then your credit score downs even more, and then your bank takes away more. And so when you're poor, you only get poorer, and and that's how the system was meant to run. Mm. So that's what I mean by like binary, right? So money is black and white. And and people want it to be this nuanced thing. It's really not. Interesting. And I think a lot of middle class people who are, let's be honest, in late stage capitalism, they're really poor. Yeah, yeah. They they want to feel like it's nuanced, but it's not. Life, on the other hand, is really nuanced and really colorful. Mm. So when you're viewing life through the lens of money, you miss most of the picture. Oh, interesting. Money is is a black and white like film grain. It's, yeah, it's like it's either right. one or the other. But like the ocean is blue, the clouds are a lighter shade of yeah. blue. Yeah, there's that green over there, and there's, there's like ripples in the ocean. Yeah there's, yeah, there's green coming up from the coral under the ocean. Yeah, this when you're just white. thinking about. A, a, a money obsessed person which let's be honest most of us are yeah. they just look at life and go that nigga's broke that nigga has Balenci's mm. on that person has chancletas on that yeah. person's hair looks like it costs 30 that's a cheap wig yeah. that's an expensive wig that, so they're not seeing color they're seeing a, a I'm spiraling. binary. I don't. Yeah. They might as well just not see life in color. Yeah. It's yeah. As You're the, colorblind. You're yeah. as good as being colorblind. Yeah. So we've just put this filter over life that like sucks. Yeah. It's like a bad <laughs> Instagram filter. Yeah. It's like Valencia yeah. or something. It's yeah. bad. Yeah. It's a really shitty. But the the problem, and I'm saying this as a poor person, is that. You can live your life in a certain way and try to just look at the color and not worry about money, but because you would die if you didn't think about money sometimes, you're forced to see life through that. that, Yeah. So, no, no, no. So, poverty is the proverbial gun on your head. Right. That forces you out of base reality and forces you into this lower dimensional mode of existence that has a shitty Valencia Instagram filter. Right. But I don't. I don't know anyone who's fully taken the glasses off. I feel like people like you and me and probably a lot of people listening, they are intellectually privileged enough to, like, see color most times. Yeah. But when, like, your money's really low or you get fired or you're just worried about money generally, like, it goes back to black and white. Mm. And it's such a depressing way to live life when you understand that life is about more. Yeah. But because our base needs are tied to whether or not you do or don't have money. Yeah. It forces you back into the black and white paradigm, even if you don't want to live there. Yeah. The yeah. amount of poor people that are emotionally intelligent and interesting and colorful and they don't want to live this way. Yeah. They're yeah. just forced to Because it's a gun to your way. head. Right. But that's, that's the best case scenario because I think... I'm, I've clearly chosen time and respect in life. Yeah. And Same. Well, I've chosen love and time. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's even when you choose that, which I think is the best angle of the triangle to choose. Yeah. I, I'd be lying if I said you can, like, freeze yourself in a perpetual state of not caring about money. No, I think that's what death is. Right. I like, guess that's, that's why people do it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's truly what death so i think 
that like love is the exact opposite of money. Yeah. Love on the other hand is infinite. So love goes infinitely in all directions and it actually doesn't have like the binaries that money does. Mm -hmm. And it's like inescapable too. Mm. And it's so nuanced and it's so colorful and it's like it you just simply can't have it in your life if you also have money in your life which isn't to say that in order to have love in your life you need to be poor but you certainly can't be hoarding wealth like you certainly can't be like playing the game like mm-hmm. you can't be cuz you have to choose and like the reason i think that like escape from the binary of money is death because i think like at the end of the rainbow of dying is just like love mm-hmm. like at the end of it the only way to escape without lose, fully losing your mind mm-hmm. it's just like to opt out of this reality once again we're back to advocating for suicide <laughs> yeah, and i think it's... patreon's gonna have a problem with this after a certain point i'm not adv- <laughs> no i get I'm what you not... mean yeah no no yeah. like honestly like <laughs> yeah. nothing makes me more suicidal than when i have to worry about money because yeah. sweet sweet death it's free yeah it's just the yeah. only time in life you get to experience something that's free you know? do you think the reason that this reality that we're existing in is tied to money is because like we're in one of the lower dimensions yeah it's such a low i hate money as like an artist because yeah. like it allows for so much bad art yeah like it encourages bad art yeah like yeah. clothing could be cool yeah. if like color and fabric and you know texture what, right, and nuance was was, was was yeah where right. people were allowed to experience this yeah things. music could be cool if like range and dynamic as opposed to like infectiousness or yeah. catchiness yeah and Pop now we have to listen was, to claro <laughs> Please leave Clara alone. Uh, you know, no, Bags now we have to song. listen to Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. Now Selena Gomez <laughs> is at the Grammys. Right. Is being awarded. Yeah, but like money, and let's be honest, like something, a conversation we have about money a lot is you'll hang out with rich people and they'll be like, this money thing is getting out of hand. <laughs> yeah. It feels like these days, all anyone cares about is money and then they open the shades to their beach house yeah, and they yes, let the sun in. Yeah, so it's yeah. like we have this conversation about money as if it's this like thing that's only now starting to get out of hand yeah. as opposed to this all encompassing monster that ate us by the mid 80s yeah. like yeah, by like you yeah. know the late 1900s money had completely consumed and eradicated all color and like art and sincerity and yeah. emotional intelligence from society money has won Mm. Right? And there's actually Do you think like between in the war between love and money, money's won? I mean <laughs> <laughs> No, cuz whenever I ask Christians, so Christians will always say things along the lines of like you know, good and evil are constantly at war, but good will win yeah. or like the devil and God are constantly at war, but God will overcome. God always And when I look at this war, Mm. that's been taking place mm-hmm. <laughs> this conflict this eternal conflict that is the fabric of reality is it not <laughs> fair to say that the devil has won it's like you know it's like the war on drugs i think drugs <laughs> won yeah everyone's I, on fentanyl <laughs> like is yeah. it not fair to say that the devil's won and this is his world now <laughs> Clean. This you know, is it. We're just living in his world. That's always And God is sad. The Christian cult I grew up in, Seventh-day Adventism, that's always what they believe. Oh, that interesting. That this earth is the whole process of humankind's existence on earth is the process of it becoming hell. This earth will become hell. Yeah. And then God will take the good true believers to the new Jerusalem which is like heaven. But oh. other Christians believe that like hell is this place, it's another realm, it's yeah. under the planet, it's like whatever. But Seventh Day Adventist looks around <laughs> and said, "No, sir, this? Is <laughs> yeah. have you spoken to the average person? Yeah. How could it get worse?" And like that's I feel like that's kind of what this whole podcast is about. Like people yeah. are demons, yes. the world is ending and yeah. this is clearly hell. 
No, it's so clear to me. And I love that we say this speaking in the, we're just sitting in the most beautiful <laughs> setting. Yeah. There's the Indian and Atlantic Oceans. <laughs> sure. There are the heaven. Look at the birds. Yeah. But there's Zimbabwean slaves being beat right there. Yeah, but we're not gonna show you that. Yeah. We're not gonna show you that. That's how you know. We it's need our though. views. Yeah. 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 But um and that doesn't mean that there still isn't beauty. That's the thing. Like yeah. I think that no, absolutely. life absolutely if you choose to be someone who chooses time and respect, you can still live a life of color and you can still have love and you can still have beauty. You'll just have to do it in a homeless shelter. Yeah. Like, like I, yes. I just, I think that you will be with the love of your life and you will be in a twin bed <laughs> in a township. And I think something about that is beautiful. Yeah. And I think something about that is really sad. But I don't know one person who has three and all the people who think they have three are delusional sociopaths. Well, I also think that, like, the people who have fully chosen love, we don't even know who they are. That's true. Because they, they must just actually live so far out the way. Yeah. It's just like a trans woman living yeah. in a forest of daisies <laughs> and lilies in, like, an area... Of South Africa, you've never. This you, sounds like Ben Shapiro's know. worst nightmare. Yes. Like he's listening to this description of a human, and he's getting enraged. <laughs> yeah, and she just because she's not a useless whore like right. me. Yeah, she knows how to grow her own best. No, the the only reason we can't do the commune. Yeah. Is because we're all useless whores. <laughs> I'm just a useless whore. Like I can't grow my own food. Yeah. I don't know which berries to pick. Yeah. I'm reliant on Jeff yeah. and Woolworths for my water, <laughs> my basic needs. Yeah. I don't know how to build my own house. Yeah. But if I did, I could have all the love in my life. Like, the key to having love in your life is to not be a useless whore. Yeah. But leave the average person in the middle of the forest. Like, you know, could yeah. they send you an email? Could they get water for themselves? Could yeah. They, could... Yeah, I, I agree. But, um... I think the, what's really sad is poor people can't experience love because they don't have time. Mm. Like, you just need time and color. Like, you can't fall in love with someone while you're both worrying about bills. Yeah. Money absolutely. brings out... Because you have to fall in love with the best of your partner. Yeah. And money brings out the worst. No, but this is what I mean by, like, you have to fully tap out. I don't think that there's, like... I don't think that 99.9999999% of humans even experience reality as it was designed to be experienced because, like, money doesn't allow for that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you have to tap out entirely. Yeah. Like, you have to, like, be living off the grid. That's where like, I'm at fully in life. planting your own food in your yeah. own calm. You, like... Away from the... You don't have a social security number. Yeah. You don't have an ID number. So like, the, you're all... You're describing the, the Unabomber. <laughs> yeah. Did he not make points? I read the Unabomber manifesto and the, I was like, this Nicholas is my Finn. white king. He predicted Facebook. He this predicted the king. NSA. He yeah. predicted mad shit. Nigga yeah. was right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's it? Patreon's going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not only are we advocating suicide... This is now a pro-terrorist organization. Yeah. This is now a, pro a pro-terrorism <laughs> podcast. You're welcome. Did ISIS make some points? <laughs> um, I'm kidding. Continue. I forgot what we were talking about. Um, we're all so high. Yeah. Oh, right. How love the has Unabomber. been corona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the Unabomber. Here's the thing. The Unabomber, right, isolated himself from all society, sold all of his fiat currency, moved into the middle of the woods in Virginia. He was also didn't have love in his life, though. You can, that's the thing. You can detach and be lonely. That's, yeah. that's moder Most of you niggas are broken yeah. lonely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> most people I know are broken lonely. But, um... This is very true. I keep struggling to, like, try to make all three work, right? Because I'm so tired of being poor. Like, it's so <laughs> no, frustrating. It's and it compounds on top of it, itself, yeah. you know? I'm so tired of that. I'm someone who has made a really firm decision to just choose respect and time. But I also just want enough money to live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just like, the bare minimum. What's the point of time if you've starved to death? Yeah. 
it seems as if whatever this last stage is, you know, yeah. where the billionaires are fully leaving and 85% of the population has a mental health illness mm. and no one has money and BlackRock owns all of the housing in the world and you will own nothing and you will be happy. They've made it impossible to choose what I chose, which is time and respect. Right. Because I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ultimate way to run out of time. But that is your freedom to love. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what type of self-help shit is that? <laughs> it's the most... It's, uh, fucking... What the fuck does that mean? I'm so toxic. <laughs> what type of spiritual I girl? Instagram? I don't have food, but I have love. <laughs> it's okay if the government kills you. Because that will be your portal to finding true love. <laughs> That's where yeah. we're at. No, that is that is where self. I just is. want to like accept my shitty life where I live in a shitty apartment, but I always have food, um, and then I have time and love. Yeah, That's all yeah. I want. Yeah. But they've literally like made that it. They they want yeah. every because the rich get even richer when people pick the other two. Mm. Like there's nothing that Jeff wants more than for everyone to live some really disgusting version of wealth where like you can kind of get all you can consume as much as you want yeah right that's like people's idea of paradise having enough money to, to consume. consume all they want which yeah. then makes jeff more money and they don't have any love in their lives so they don't see any problem with the way the world works yeah because the second you love someone other than yourself you start looking at our basically slave state yeah. with yeah. really different eyes yeah. yeah once you realize that like you snap out of solipsism and you experience the emotion of Sonder, mm. it makes that, you know, Amazon fulfillment worker that is dead behind the eyes because they've been working all week yeah. um, look a little different. Mm. But when you don't have any love in your life and you don't have a family and you're yeah, just you staying... Yeah, you actually don't see it. Right, in your little apartment, getting all the things you could possibly want sent to you while you have your fucking Oculus Metaverse glasses on. That's There's nothing better for that. They want everyone to choose what they perceive as money which is still being a broke bitch to yeah, them yeah, yeah but it means you can consume all you want and time yeah um and they sorry money and respect or the pursuit of it right because yeah, in that clout. way they can steal yeah yeah they also want to kill respect and yeah. replace it with clout yeah which people really don't see the difference between yeah but like clout is worthless to me it's and truly... respect means everything to me yeah but a big reason I struggle to have any semblance of a career, too, is because um, I have shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you ever feel that way? No, I do. Yeah. Shame is really holding me back. No, truly. And like morals. And moral, <laughs> moral. God damn it. Yo, if well, I, like when you give a fuck. Yo, if I didn't have morals. Yo. Like if you were to just sell flat tummy tea. I, I, tr if, I tried. Yeah. I sold flat tummy tea once. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm a piece of shit. And now I've been deported. Yeah. You know? Like, no, I completely feel you. God, if I could only just not have morals. Yeah. I'd be so rich. Yeah. But I can't. I don't know. I, I just, I can't. And something we were talking about is also just like jobs. Like because oh, I, I value do, yeah. my time. Yeah. And I burnt out, yeah. right? So I've been working since I was 15. I'm fully burnt out. Yeah. Like I couldn't do it if I tried. Mm. I go to indeed.com no, and then I say, close the website. Yeah. I like I read the description of jobs that I could apply to. And then I think, well, I'd kill myself. Yeah. yeah. So let me just close the website and go to sleep. Yo, people with jobs, how are you doing it? I No, please, genuinely, please, in the comments. Well, I've had a million jobs, yeah. and we need to do an entire ep I think our next episode should be just about jobs. Yeah. The reason I'm so burnt out is because capitalism has killed me. <laughs> capitalism has killed me. I've done a million jobs, and me. I've been fired from all of them. But yeah. I'm also like... I'm just so bad at being a human being. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but like being a human being. Yeah. 
I just I actually I'm incapable Yeah I can't wake up at 7 every morning Yeah And then go to my desk job And sit Yeah For 9 hours Yeah And then get in the subway And sit Yeah And then get back home And sit <laughs> I'm like in My body wasn't designed For that level of sittery Like I can't <laughs> But so, it's like being a human yeah. and like not deteriorating yeah. and completely crumbling yeah. and going mad. Yeah. And like being able to have like monotony, yeah. like endless monotony. Yeah. Is just something I'm not able like I'm not physically able to do. Yeah. And jobs require like that's the ni- that's the thing you need to the have. The thing is I'm not anti work. I'm anti job. Yeah, like, same. Something I was showing you the other day is like the anti-work movement yeah. that got really big on Reddit. Yeah. And like the reason why it demised is because there are people like me that want to do something meaningful and useful. And they're not lazy. Like yeah. I'm Jamaican. I'm I'm not a lazy person. Yeah. I yeah. can't do meaningless, monotonous bullshit. Yeah, yeah, every day for the right. rest of your life. Um and then there are people who don't want to do anything. <laughs> Ever. And like yeah. I think they're I like I think they I have no interest in them. Yeah. But I think they also deserve to exist. And do we they, should do they? No, be honest. Do people who don't if they're want fun. to... <laughs> you can be a lazy, useless piece of shit if you're a fun hang. Not in my dictatorship. The state should subsidize your life if you're a fun hang. Not in my fascist dictatorship. It's how I feel about thieves as well. <laughs> Are you fun? Because if you're fun, then like you, can, you still you you have a, a job, right? Like We all have that cousin. They steal from you. They've never worked a goddamn day in your, their life. Yeah. They live at the family house or whatever. But they're so fun at Christmas. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that is a... Like, I, I think people have merit outside of, like, their ability to contribute physically or mentally to mm. the society if they can at least contribute a vibe. You know? So some people... The problem... That's if you, okay. If you're boring and useless... You can fuck off. Yeah, we. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, if but you're no, fun, I digress. Yeah, yeah, if you're fun, let's keep you around. Okay, I um, digress. Sorry, what were you saying? It's not that I don't want to work. I, you know me. Like I like working. I'm, I'm like a hard working person. Yeah, I'm yeah. not late. You're very I always, Jamaican in that. Yeah, way. I always yeah. want to be doing something. I'm always doing a million different things. But the reason why I'm poor and can't hold down a job is I read the descriptions of these jobs. Yeah. You ever been on like Indeed.com? Yeah, yeah. And read like, you will be creating Excel files for the pharmaceutical cat. Yeah. And it's like, I read the description. And it's like, just kill me. Just take the knife out the drawer and yeah. stab me. Right. Just kill me then. I can't do that. And then maybe I am lazy. I don't know. Is that lazy that I can't? I- I is can't. it autism? Yeah. I don't know. It's, but it's it's not... A, I'm actually not a lazy whore. Contrary to most people's belief. I'm just unable. Yeah. And I don't know how to explain that. But, like, I'm unable to job. I also, I can't like, do jobbery. I know I'm never going to have kids. I, I know that, like, I treat my work like my kid. Right, yeah. as toxic as that is, yeah. I've like committed to that. So like, my work has to be meaningful. Yeah. One because the world is ending and I can't have a kid, and two because like I'm never gonna have money because this is the decision that I've made. Yeah. So like the work and the way I spend my time, I can't be creating Excel files for a, yeah. a feline yeah. pharmaceutical company. Yes. That can't that can't be how I spend my time on yeah. this spinning rock. Do that you can't think be it. that? To force someone to have a job is akin to killing them. Because that's how I feel. Right. I think the reason I fundamentally can't have a job is because it's akin to killing me. You've ki- Haven't you killed me? Yeah. 50 years of my life, yeah. you've taken. You know, it's- and you forced me to spend those years yeah. on Excel. Have yeah. you not just put a gun through my temple? The way that Mary J. Blige feels on <laughs> Not Gonna Cry yeah. when she says 11 years and all I have to show is the kids, that's how I feel about my early 20s in corporate <laughs> yeah. America. Yeah. Because what do I have to show for? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like, it's also like, 
We do a lot of things where because we have no control over our careers, we take it out in our personal relationships. Mm. And then there are certain things that we it's it works the opposite way. So like a lot of times people have no control over their jobs. Mm. So they're extra pressed about what their partner is doing on their phone. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's, That's where that comes out. Yeah. And then there's also times where it's like a lot of times when like women are with someone with their through their whole twenties and mm. then they break up in their 30s the number one thing they say is he wasted my best years yeah yeah. he wasted when my body was the best when i was the most hopeful when i was the most optimistic yeah when i had the most time to like work on a relationship like that man wasted that that's like the number one thing i hear women complaining about in their 30s but no one talks about that with their jobs yeah they, you could it's have been insane. in Greece, my nigga. Yeah. And you were at Burns Logistics. You, true, you could have been under a mango tree. Right. Like, because, ha, in, just doing shrooms under a mango tree, eating mango. Like, yeah. you could have been doing that, but you were inside Burns Logistics. Yeah. Doing an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. For some white man to buy a Bugatti. <laughs> and so for you to go back home to your shitty house. Yeah. But when in Jersey. Right. <laughs> in New Jersey. Yeah. But when you say that about your relationship, it's oh girl, you know, you just got standards. Like, you know, like yeah. you just got you're right. But then when you say that about your working life and the way you spend your time you're and your insane. career, you're a lazy bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so why is it when I have standards? For my relationship, I'm an empowered queen. Yeah. But when I don't want to work your shitty job, because I have standards for what I do with literally 40 hours out of my week. Yeah. I'm a lazy You're bitch. You're a lazy bitch. I don't know. Like, I just... But That's I don't, hilarious. Maybe because yeah. it's scary. I think it's because it's scary for people. What to is? Com- just to compliment how much time you spent sitting in a cubicle making yeah. white man money. I think I am quite linear. <laughs> Not linear, but I am quite the way I think about my life in a very mathematical way. Yeah. And I guess that's a bit autis- an autistic way of like navigating your life. Yeah. But I think it's the only way to not waste it. Mm. Like I think about my life like realistically, this is how long I'd want to live. Realistically, I don't want to have kids and then I'm going to save this much time. Yeah. Realistically, this is what I do like while my legs still work and then while my arms still work and then while like, my eyes like I think about my life mm-hmm. in that like formulaic mathematical way. Yeah. But I think most people just conceptualize their lives as like this nebulous, flimsy thing that is like all encompassing and ever expanding yeah and that's crazy to me yeah because it's dwindling every second i i think the idea of spending your first 18 years of life basically listening to your parents like people romanticize childhood but remember it kind of sucked you had no agency Mm. right like you couldn't determine what to do with your time then right you had to be at school and then your mom would put you in certain programs yeah and then you're in college where they kind of give you like this fake synthetic freedom yeah and then most people don't get to go to college because you know you're poor it's expensive yeah um and then for the rest of your life until you're 65 (laughs) yeah you're supposed to sit in a in a cubicle yeah. and uh, manage Excel sheets for a, a feline pharmaceutical company. Yes. And um And be grateful. Then at sixty five you're when supposed your knees to buckle. start. That's when you go to Greece. Have yeah. you met a sixty five year old that is in from the Greece? West that is even capable of climbing the pyramids without having a stroke? <laughs> like- it's this idea, like you're gonna deteriorate your that's body. That's literally. That's what I mean. And like life say, is very mathematical. At this age, your knees start to buckle. Yeah. At this age, your eyesight starts to dwindle. Yeah. Now you have dementia. So, bitch. Yeah. You thought you were going to Greece when you hit the dementia stage. That <laughs> you won't even remember. <laughs> bitch, you have dementia. No, it's you an thought, absurd... You thought your life could start then? It's an absurd... Are you mad? What do you think about the idea of... I have a friend who's doing this, and I think it's the only way, because they won't just let me choose time and respect, that I can keep paying my bills, which is 
I work, I go into like full sociopath work mode, make money mode, which most people stay in a perpetual state of mm. for say a year at a time. I try to make as much money as possible. Yeah. And then I figure out the bare minimum amount of money that I need to live. And I don't work again for four years. And then after that money runs <laughs> out, I go into full money making sociopath mode again for yeah. a year of my life. Yeah. And then I make enough money to last me the next four years, and then I quit, and then I. Da, 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 da. What do you think about that? What are your thoughts? Because at it least- doesn't work. It, that's how it works in theory. That's a great theoretical plan. Yeah. But the thing about money, because it's inherently the devil and the demon, it fundamentally changes who you are and it sucks mm. you in. It's a drug. You like you start to so in theory mm -hmm. you're gonna graduate from college and then you're gonna be and I met a guy who said this to me. Yeah. So I used to be an accountant. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm this is akin to killing me. Yeah. So I'm gonna leave. Yeah. And go work in fashion. I was also dumb for that. But yeah. I, I I used to be an accountant. I worked at Ernst and Young. Yeah. And there was a guy there with me that wanted to be a musician. And he was like, I'm gonna work for eight to ten years yeah and then like once i've saved up enough money yeah. then i'm gonna quit my job yeah no he said he's gonna work when he hits 30 mm -hmm. which should have been two years ago so yeah he was like yeah you know i want to be a musician yeah i'm just gonna work until i'm 30 and then yeah. when i'm 30 i'm gonna quit because i'll have saved up enough money i'll be partner by then like yeah. whatever it's good yeah i'll have saved up enough money yeah. and then i'm gonna be a manager in the music and let me tell you right now this yeah. man is like 33 he must be 33 by now because yeah. like i was his junior by quite a lot yeah and he's still at ernst and young right He's still at Ernst but, and Young. Like, hilarious to think you could get into the music industry after losing your hairline. Like, 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 like you know. Sir, are you mad? Like, right. are, people always make these plans, but like, yeah. life is formulaic. By the time you're 30, yeah, you now have a mortgage because you did you did what everyone told you to do. You now have a mortgage. Mm. You have a bond. A mortgage and a bond is the same thing. So by the time you're 30, you have a mortgage, you have a credit card line you have to pay off, you're paying off a car that you can't. You have all of this debt yeah. that you are 10 times more dependent on your shitty Ernst & Young job yeah. that you were when you were a free-spirited yeah. 22. Like, no. You know it's even worse? Bitch, are you bad? It's the job that I just left, which is there's nothing more toxic than jobs that are right next to the thing that you're passionate That's about. That's the one. Those yeah. are the ones that really suck your whole life away. Yeah. I used to work for this music software company where basically, like, as far as a job the, that I could do, yeah. it was the only job in the world that I could do. Yeah. Basically, I just got to make music samples all day. Yeah. But it was the most toxic. Yeah. Because they're like, but you're working in music. Of shitty fuckheads. Yeah. I've ever yeah. met in my entire life. Yeah. Like my boss there, Nalia Sanchez, suck my dick, go yes. die. Yeah. Um, was the most toxic because like everyone feels happy to be here. It's yeah. Like fashion. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's so That's how close they get you. Yeah. to the thing that you think you wanted to do with your life, yeah. you you can almost convince yourself it is. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm in a cubicle, but I got a guitar in my cubicle. Yes. You idiot. You're not doing what the... You wanted to tour the world and make music that you give a fuck about. Yeah. That's, and, and because I was sitting down all day making music, yeah. I like convinced myself that this is as good as it gets. Yeah. When I was making fucking commercial jingles. Yeah. It's and it it the thing yeah. is those jobs are so toxic because like it ruins the thing that you love. Yeah. I yeah. and now like I can't have any job, but if I were to need to get a job again, it'd have to be something completely outside of music. Oh my god. Because nothing damaged my relationship Talk with music about more it. than fucking associating this thing that is my child, the the thing I love most in the world, with shitty ass New Jersey corporate fuck people. <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's yeah. just and now the amount of work and like true work of love and like really focusing on music I'm going to have to do to like get myself out of that association. Mm. You know, like I would never tell someone unless you're going to fully go balls to the walls and just do exactly what it is you want to do. Yeah. I would never tell anyone to work in an industry. 
of what they want to do. I would never even tell someone to do what they love. I would never tell anyone to work. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I completely so. You, wait, you wouldn't tell people I, to do what they love. Absolutely not. I, the worst career advice I've ever received is do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Bitch, are you mad? Are you actually sick? Are you actually sick? Yeah. You should never do what you love for a living. Yeah. Money is a demonic, poisonous drug yeah. that sucks the love out of everything. I think that... Everything. Like once you attach the thing that you love doing to money... <laughs> That drug will slowly suck the life out of it until yeah. you're just. So I used to really love art, and like I feel like I was born an artist. Like at heart, I was an artist. Yeah. You know, like I was painting at five years old. Like my whole life, I always thought I'd be an artist. First, I thought I was going to be a painter, and then I thought I was going to be a singer, and then I thought I was going to be in an orchestra. Yeah. Like I, I, and then I wanted to work in fashion. Like I have always perceived myself from the second I hopped out the womb yeah. as an artist. Yeah. And so I pursued that because hoes told me to do what I love. So I left Ernst and Young, yeah. the dumb bitch I am. Yeah. I left my six figure salary. Yeah. And then I went to go I went to go do this internship in London. Yeah. And I was still I was still like a sophomore in college, so it was fine. Mm. And as soon as I graduated, because I was like, I'm going to do what I love. I worked for this company called Beautycon. That was by far the most toxic. Yeah. Invi I've, first of all, I was a slave. Yeah. I was getting a transportation stipend, not a salary. And I was grateful because I was working in beauty. Yeah. What's the problem? I get to work in a new fun startup environment always... and the boss was queer yeah you know, oh she's this yeah. this lesbian yeah i forgot her name the most top but because she's queer she can yeah. weaponize that That's and be thing. toxic lesbians it's... are either the best people you'll ever meet but, like, in your entire legal... life or like the most deeply capitalistic and it's like a bitch you know you know these you know when white women or white men are queer yeah and they think it absolves them of their whiteness yeah and i was like this white devil <laughs> You think because you're lesbian, you yeah. can do slavery? Right. So, but she did. So yeah. she did slavery. Yeah. And it's just the buffoonery. Yeah. Of feeling like, I know I'm, a, I'm literally a slave. Yeah. But because I'm doing what I love, it justifies yeah. m me being exploited and tortured. Yeah. And like, it just, like you're the lucky fact to be that here. like passion justifies exploitation is disgusting. Yeah. Are you mad? But, you, so you were asking me the other day, uh, you always like find it surprising like how exploited musicians are. Yeah. And you'll be like, guys, why don't you guys just stop? <laughs> and it's oh, because you know there's a 16 year old in Serbia posting Drake type beats on YouTube yeah. that would literally do this for free, mm -hmm. right? Like he's been yeah. doing it for free his whole, and like, yeah. it's such a coveted thing. Yeah. Or what people think it is, is mm. such a coveted thing. That there's no willing to negotiate when people feel like they have you because yeah. you're in this rare position where you're getting any kind of anything mm. working in beauty or entertainment or music or with animals. Yeah. Or with, that's where the most exploitation is because capitalism and corporate structure is all about negotiation. But you can't mm. negotiate when someone feels like they're doing you a favor that's the by thing. allowing you to work in this field that everyone wants to work in. And the thing is that like this idea that doing what you love creates this environment where you feel as if someone giving you a job is the favor itself because yeah. you're privileged to be doing what you love yeah but a job is a job and you'll never love a job so yeah. it just the two will never be that a job is not love and a job is not a hobby and a job is not your passion it's a job yeah it's labor it's surplus labor that your boss is exploiting from you so yeah. that they can buy a bugatti at your expense are you mad yeah. no <laughs> The like, thing are you too is like, just because you get to be in the realm of what you love doing doesn't mean that you're doing what you love doing. Yes, yeah. Like an analogy I was I was saying with music is like, musicians are bakers, right? Yeah. Like that's 
that's the that's the analogy I'm gonna use. Like we just love baking bread, mm. and like we love making different kinds of bread, and we're really good at it. We know just how long to knead the dough. We know just how long to leave the yeast for it to rise, the exact temperature to do. It. Like that's what we think about. That's what yeah. we love thinking about. And then content, right? Being mm. a content creator, being a digital marketing person, being an influencer, yeah. being a brand, yeah, is making meat. That's yes. making meat, right? Yeah. And what the modern industry or what the consumer has now said is we want sandwiches, mm. right? So musicians are bread makers and content and being an influencer is meat and all the consumer wants is a sandwich. Yeah. So yeah. at what point am I really doing what I love to do? Yeah. Because like, yeah, sure, I get to bake bread for what? Like 15 minutes out of the day. Yeah. But most of the time it's doing my makeup. The next rest of the time it's thinking about what am I going to post on Instagram yep. today. Yeah. The next of the time is figuring out how Instagram ads work. Yeah. The rest of the time is fucking going to some stupid LA party where I can meet the person who does this yeah. playlist. And then you're doing and, stupid interviews. And when you think about the fact that, oh, I loved baking bread. Yeah. How much of your day Day to day yeah. did you spend breaking bread yeah so when i was working in music and for five minutes out of the day i was making a beat that i genuinely thought was good yeah but for six hours a day i was making shredded ass yeah. for some stupid white people in new jersey yeah. and the rest of the day i was figuring out how facebook ads were, and then the rest of the day i was on stupid zoom calls yeah. and then the rest of the day i was going out for drinks with these fuckheads because yeah. you have to network and shit how much of my day did I... Uh, sure, on yeah. my fucking W-2, it says I work in music. But do I work in music? Yeah, when you look at the time a, that's allocated throughout your day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, do you work in music or do you do marketing? Exactly. Like, what is your job? Yeah. yeah. Or it's like, you know, am I an artist or am I a sex worker? Yeah. Both yeah. are fine. But I actually just wanted to do... This no, would be fine if I yeah. wanted to be a sex worker. Yeah. But no, I actually like, wanted why? to play the violin. Yeah. So why do I have to shake my ass? <laughs> yes. Why am I, Lizzo really fucked the game up. Yeah. Because why can't I just play the flute? Yeah. Why do I also have to shake my ass? I say this all the time. It's so tragic that we'll never have another Nina Simone. Because Nina Simone would never be allowed to exist. Yeah. Well, she'd have to this make economy. it clap she'd while have singing to, Strange she, Fruit. Ex she, would ex she would have to be posting thirst traps on Instagram. Yeah. And she couldn't. Right. She's a dark skin bitch. She's me. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 the thing that I think is sad because it seems as if that's the best thing that we're being offered. This mm. idea like you will get to schedule Facebook ads for the thing you like, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it seems as if like the full quote would be like, you know, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life because you will have killed yourself <laughs> because you've sucked all the joy out of the thing that you once loved. Like, I, I think that somewhere there's like the full quote and like we didn't like peel off the thing and finish reading. It. Yeah. That's, I don't know anyone more depressed than yeah. people working in the field of the thing that they yeah. love. Yeah. Bitch, go be a, a vibrolibus. Be a vibrolibus. Yeah. It's a good course, three months in and out, starting paid 48 k Go back to Ernst & Young. But don't. Don't go back to Ernst & Young. But I, be at the bottom. I don't, know, I don't know what to tell people. Yeah. Because I, I haven't figured it out. Right? Yeah, I don't think anyone has. I've chose time and, and respect, and I just want to get by, but I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. You know? So, um... But I will say, like, don't... It, what you said is very true. Like, don't play yourself. Don't be like... Oh, I'm just gonna work here until I'm. Th <laughs> they never not. start the Instagram routine. They just yeah. do phlebotomy. Yeah. They never get to it. Because then, you know, you were going to start the boutique at 28, but a nigga knocked you up at 29. Yeah. And yeah. then now, like, you need the health care from the job because the nigga's teeth need... You got to yeah. get the dental because the nigga has bad teeth. Yeah. And you had a baby with bad teeth because your nigga ain't shit. And he doesn't have dental because, yeah. you know, he's working on his mixtape. Yes. So now you never get to start the IG boutique because you need the dental for the kid you didn't want to have. Yeah. So be realistic, and but I'm very realistic, and I'm poor, so I don't know what the fuck to tell <laughs> yeah. you people. No, I just I think we need to do a follow up on college. Oh my and, god! And and like scam. whether education. Sell crack, please sell crack. <laughs> I had a choice between selling crack and going to college. 
And I will say, crack has never put me 40K in debt. Yeah. Like, crack has never taken away four years from my life. Yeah. I really wish I sold crack. Um, but yeah, no, we should <laughs> definitely talk about it. Yes. No, I would love to hear everyone's thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about crack. jobs <laughs> and crack, you know? And, like, I think we should definitely do a follow-up on, like, whether education is worth it whether the college experience is worth it mm. and like education is a definitely an interesting yeah topic. and whether you would take your kids to school if you had them i have some thoughts i will take my kids to the morgue before i take them to school <laughs> <laughs> that's fair is that ignorant no that's fair i think that's fine books don't put food on the table <laughs> that's hilarious and i wish african parents knew that yeah. I wish they knew that books don't put food on the table. <laughs> well, so yeah. thank you for listening. I hope you, you quit your job, but you also do not do what you love. <laughs> okay? And uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. Yeah. Bye.